And when I was working at the restaurant, the people that was around me, the guy that made the most was making like 30,000. So I had other friends, they were making like 80,000, but I was making 20,000. So for me, it was more comfortable to hang out with the people that was making the same or very little more or less than I was making. What mistakes did you make in your 20s as a young man? What kind of mistakes did, did you make that if you could reverse it, because you, you've been very successful very quickly. I mean, you're you know, half a million dollar earner in five years, pretty much. So you've done an amazing, amazing, you know, amazing things. And so, but why, why didn't you do it in your 20s? Why do, why do you think you didn't do it in your 20s? You know what? Because I was doing what everybody else was doing at my age. I'm probably more. You're drinking, I was drinking more. You're partying, I was partying more. I didn't, I never read a book in my 20s. No one. I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know anything that you read books, you can learn, th learn things. I didn't know that. So I was just watching Netflix every day. Uh, all the movies out, I knew them. All the songs, I knew them. You play a song on the radio, I knew the whole song, what happened to the singer, what happened to her mother, everything. So uh, I didn't have any real knowledge about what was in life was going on. What I had, I was hungry. I right. always been hungry. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I always had dreams of leaving. For example, I remember uh, I met a friend of mine from Colombia a couple of years ago, and she told me, you, you realize your dream. I was like, what dream? So Miguel, you used to say when you were, we were kids that you were going to live in Miami. I was like, what? Yeah, you always said that. Well, I didn't know. I, rem I don't remember. But I, I remember always dreaming about big things. Always dreaming big. Always. Even though I didn't have anything. But I was like, one day I'm going to have a porch. One day I'm going to have this house. How? I don't know. But I, I kept dreaming. On my 30s, when the 30s were approaching, I was like, what's going on? My dreams, all the dreams that I had, what happened? Maybe I should abandon those dreams and get new, smaller dreams that are accomplishable. That's what I thought. And, and what so, I, so, so do you think, I mean, if you, were to, if you were to advise somebody in their 20s right now, what solid piece of advice could you give somebody? Because somebody's listening right now, they're going, I'm, I'm exactly where you're at, right? You know, where you were. And think about how quickly you change your life. You change your life huge ways in a year, two years. I mean, it was year. like overnight almost in one year. You were making, you know, I don't know. How much did you make your first year in business? 86000 80, It's 80, so almost $100,000 you made your first year just by obviously being a part of a business and then yeah. following a game plan. What advice do you give to those people? Is how fast do you want to get it? It depends on who are you hanging out with. Because you know what? And when I was working at the restaurant, the people that was around me, the guy that made the most was making like 30,000. So I had other friends, they were making like 80,000, but I was making 20,000. So for me, it was more comfortable to hang out with the people that was making the same or very little more or less than I was making because it's easier. You don't feel uncomfortable when you go to a restaurant and you're gonna pay and they have the money I don't have. So one day I heard that you are the average of the five people that you hang out with. So I look at my friends, I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm screwed. <laughs> I got to change this. So I switched and started spending more time with the guys, my friends that were making more money. But I was in America, I was spending time with these people. My income started going up. But when it really changed, the moment that it, like, it flipped was in 2015, I decided to do exactly as my upline was telling me. The guy, my mentor was telling me, so the best advice I can give somebody is find a mentor. Find somebody that is doing, uh, already, already have done what you want to do. And do exactly what he's doing. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm going to do it, but not his way. I'm going to do it my way. You might, you might be changing the very exact thing that is making him successful. So I decided to spend time with Willie Naranjo. And everything that he used to tell me, he, Willie he doesn't drink. So I stopped drinking. Willie doesn't go out. I stopped going out. I started doing the same things. First at the office, last at the office. And he tell me, 
and work harder than everybody else. If you do the same thing, you're going to be successful at this business. So my goal was to work every day more than the people around me at the office. Awesome. Man. So, awesome. 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 Hey, everybody, just want to remind you, we are on Wealth on the Beach podcast with Daniel Alonzo. Our guest today is Miguel Illich. And it, I'm telling you, one of the, the shining stars of our company and uh, couldn't be more happy and excited to be on with him today. Hey, look, man, people are saying, come on. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it can't be real. Okay. What you're saying, I mean, to make a half a million dollars in five years, almost a hundred thousand dollars your first year, you, you drive nice cars. Now you, you're just telling me about your vacation to Dubai. You have great vacations. You're living a dream life right now. And people are saying, you know what, man, that's bullshit. Okay. It ain't real. It's probably a scam. It's got to be a pyramid. And, and, and look, coming from where you came from, where there was a lot of shady things going on probably in Colombia, right? Yeah. You've seen a lot of shady things. Why do you think, you know, or what would you say to those people? I was at the same place that you guys are. The first time that I saw Will in Naranjo telling me that he was making 300000 I was like, yeah, right. But I was thinking one day, I went to a, a, a meeting from the company and I saw all the like 2,000 people. And I was thinking, oh my God, all these people are being scammed by these guys that are on the top over there. I'm not going to be the one. I'm not going to be the stupid one. No, I'm smarter than them. But then I was thinking also the lifestyle that I saw them. I saw the lifestyle. So you can say things that, oh, yeah, I have this, I make this money, I make that. But if you don't see anything around, it, it doesn't make sense to you. I saw the lifestyle. I saw how they were really working. And I, I, I went out with them to have lunch a couple of times. So I saw it was true that it made sense that they had the money. So I was thinking, what if I am the stupid one? And everybody else got it, and I did it. What if? And then I have a friend that he, he told me, oh, they're brainwashing you. That taught me a little bit. But then one day, uh, Willie was telling me that the best thing that happened to him is that he got brainwashed. <laughs> he said, the best thing that happened to me is that I got brainwashed, and I believed in this, and now look at my life. So I was like, oh, my God. You know hey, what? I'm, I'm going to let it happen. If I'm going to get brainwashed, I might as well get brainwashed into getting massive, passive residual income and freedom Absolutely. And, and options. If you're going to brainwash me, brainwash me that way. I'm good with that. Um, hey, look. All right. So let, let's, let's get down to business, man. Um, I, I want to know, you know, why is it? Because you are one of the most incredible recruiters and builders in the history of the company. Um, why is it that people struggle with recruiting today? Recruiting the way, you know what happened? Uh, when I joined the business, they told me you have to do, um, you have to sit with people and do, um, check their financial needs, financial needs and show them how they can improve on everything. But for me, I didn't even want to do that on myself. I was like, I don't care about it. That's the way I was thinking. I don't care about financial needs. I just need to make some money. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. So, when one day I was sitting with Willie, I told him that I wanted to learn how to do all those things before going to see people. And he said, no, you have to take me to people. So I show you. And then I took him to people. I saw everything. But one day I asked him, what if I can, can I just go and sit with people and do the way I want to do it? Can I just do the person? Can I just talk to them the way I want to? Because when I told the way that you're teaching me to, to speak, I feel like I'm reading a script and I don't want to do that. He said, you know what? Why don't you stop talking and go do something? So I went on, I went outside and started talking to people the way that I felt. And I'll say, look, I, my friend, I was making uh, $22,000 a month last, last year. This month I'm making 5,000 part time because I'm doing this. Next month I'm making 10,000. At the end of the year, I make over 100,000. Do you want to work with me? That was my whole script very fast. and just showing them this is what happened. This is what's going on. This is what's going to happen. And people started like liking that. They saw that I was honest, I was open, I wasn't uh, bluffing, I wasn't just saying things that to sound good. 
And what I learned that people love authenticity. They love being you being honest. I used to show wherever, if I was at, a, at that level, I was showing, I was, I'm at this level, I'm going to this place, and this is going to happen in one year. It became my script. So I kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And then um, I read a lot and I still do. If you like this video and you want to watch another one, click right here. If you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.